Hi, this is Inka. In this tutorial, let's explain all video features such as audio controls on iPhone 16 Pro. I'll go through some tips in the camera settings. This tutorial is all about video. If you're looking for a photography tutorial, I already have that as well. So I'll link it below for those interested. Let's start with tips when it comes to cameras. For daytime filming with lots of available light, all three cameras will give you beautiful results. For filming at low light conditions, it is best to use the main 24 mm camera that has f1.78 aperture and ultra wide 13 mm camera with 120 degree field of view that has f2.2 aperture as they both have 48 megapixel sensors. You will get more details and less noise in the video. The main camera also enables 2x 48 mm telephoto f1.78 aperture, but because it is 12 megapixels instead of 48, you might get to see less details and more noise in low light conditions. The 5x 120 mm telephoto camera has f2.8 aperture and 20 degrees field of view but it is also only 12 megapixels, so you will see noise in low light videos and less details. What I would do, I would attach an external lens to the main camera if I needed amazing night video quality. If you will be digitally zooming in, the image quality is going to get worse, so rather choose an appropriate camera and move yourself closer or further away. What is the bare base when it comes to video, resolution and frame rates? iPhone 16 Pro gives you 4K at 24, 30, 60 and now also 120 frames per second. There is a catch though. If you choose to film in 4K 120 frames per second, you will be only able to film with the main one time or two times camera. You are not going to get an ultra wide and five times telephoto camera. You need external lenses to get additional focal lengths in 4K. If you prefer filming at 60 frames per second, you are good there. You get all cameras. If you need a smaller file size, you can film in HD at 30, 60 and 120 frames per second. If you will be using action mode, to get perfect handheld stabilization, you're not going to get 4K, but 2.8K at 24, 30 and 60 frames per second or smaller resolution HD at 30 or 60 frames per second. This is the reason I personally use gimbals when it comes to stabilization in 4K. You will also get a perfect horizon and controlled movements. If you will be filming in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, you have now choice to select the playback speed. Here is a clip I filmed at 60 frames per second. Let's hit the edit icon. And now at the top, there is this new stopwatch icon. I can play this video at 100% speed, so it will be just a normal speed or I can slow it down 50% to be able to use it on a 30 frames per second timeline. If you want to use the clip on a 24 frames per second timeline, you need to bring it to the video editing software and slow it down there 60%. Let's take a look at clip filmed at 120 frames per second. Hit the edit icon, stopwatch, and now you see more choices when it comes to playback. 100%, 50% half speed, 25% slow motion for 30 frames per second timeline, and 20% for 24 frames per second timeline. If you will be just playing the clips on the phone or posting separate clips on social media, there's no issue there. You will see one single clip. If you are someone like me who edits on laptop, once you attach your phone via USB-C cable, you will see two separate files created. Regular IMG underscore number file that is in real speed that can be slowed down in the video editing software 
and another clip that has that playback selected. The file name has letter E in it before the number. This is how you will know. It is the same as with portrait video. The file without E is just regular video and the file with E in it is a portrait video. Let's leave all that technical stuff that gets our brains overloaded and let's listen to some audio. iPhone 15 Pro had three microphones. iPhone 16 Pro has now four microphones with lower noise floor, so the sound should be better. Right now I'm recording myself in my studio. I have a sound blankets around me, so this room is treated, so it should be pretty good. Before that, you were listening to the sound from Kamika microphone. By default, this phone records audio 360 from all around the phone, but you can change it to directional audio in the post or in the new feature called Audio Mix. Let's pull out a clip and hit edit. Here is a new tool called Audio Mix. Once you hit that, the audio is on standard by default. Just the typical all 360 around the camera sound. There are three choices when it comes to directional audio. In frame, studio and cinematic. If you're filming in a room where there are people around you or you can hear the people in the background, this should tone down the sound of the other people and it should only record the sound of whoever is in the frame. Studio option is for having audio sound like you recorded a podcast in a studio. The background noise will be reduced. All these three tools can be tunable with the slider. You can make the effect stronger or lighter. The following clip I purposely filmed in a very noisy environment to see or hear if the background noise is reduced and how much. I decided to film this clip outdoors. It should be very quiet here, but it's not because there is a highway behind me and the wind is coming, bringing all the sound. So this is the sound you are going to get. Now let me enable the studio audio mix feature. And now the sound should be hopefully a little bit better. We'll see once I get back on our computer how it's gonna sound. But anyways, this is the sound you would get in a very loud environment. Cinematic uses all the microphones around all 360, but then it mixes it so it sounds like it's coming from the front where the camera is recording. Just a side note. It's going to sound differently if you're going to play it on the smartphone versus if you're going to play it on a computer. As you most likely already know, there is now a physical control camera button on the phone. Hard press one time, camera app opens up and you are ready to film. Press again to start or stop filming. I explained this camera control button in details in the previous photography tutorial. This tutorial is all about the video, so let's take a look at the tools that are available in this mode. If you soft press, you will be able to control the control you used last time, such as zoom. If you softly double press, that will take you to all camera controls, exposure, zoom and camera controls. Depth is grayed out as that one is available in portrait video mode only. Style and tones are gray as well as those are only available for photography. Slide to one you want to control, soft press, and now you can adjust the setting with sliding action again. If you need to change the mode, just tap on the screen to switch between the modes. Every mode will have slightly different controls available. Let's talk about the pause button. We finally got one. If you need to pause reel, for example, or shorts quickly without editing, hit record, pause, hit record of another shot and done. It is also super useful if you are taking several shots in one location. You will get one file instead of many. What is new? What has changed? What can we control in camera settings when it comes to video? Let's go to settings and hit the camera. Camera control is new. Let's hit that. 
If you happen to accidentally press the camera control button all the time, you can change it from single press to double press. Let's go back and scroll down to record the video section. Here you can set default resolution and frame rate for quick take video. If you don't know what quick take video is, it is the ability to record a video in photo mode. Press and hold the shutter button. You can also swipe to lock it up. Below we have show pal formats. Enhanced stabilization is on. Action mode lower light is off by default and I would keep it that way. If you enable this and you film in low light, it will decrease the stabilization. HDR video is enabled by default. If you don't like that look, you can turn it off. Auto FPS is also off and I would keep it that way. If you enable this and you film in low light, it will reduce frame rate. Lock camera I have on as I don't want the phone to switch automatically cameras while I'm filming a video. Lock white balance is also great to have enabled as you are going to get steady colors across the whole video no matter where you move. Let's go back to settings. Record slow-mo lets you choose the default setting for slow motion. The choices are 1080p at 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. You can also option for the newly added 4K at 120 frames per second. The same goes with record cinematic. You can choose between 1080p at 30 frames per second, 4K at 24 frames per second, and 4K at 30 frames per second. Next setting is record sound. Spatial audio is the one we talked about earlier, all around 60. Other choices you have are stereo or mono. Allow audio playback is on. I will actually turn it off. I would like the phone to stop playing any song once I hit a record button. Wind noise reduction is on. Let's keep it there. Let's go back to settings and hit formats. High efficiency will reduce file size in the videos and you will get HEVC format. If you have trouble playing the video on a certain devices, you can option for the most compatible that will give you H.265 format. Let's scroll all the way down to video capture. Here you can enable Apple ProRes that will give you better dynamic range in the videos and less over sharpened look if you select lock, but the files are huge. And if you want to record in 60 or 120 frames per second, you will need to use an external SSD card. You have the option to select HDR or lock. When you enable ProRes, you will see the icon here in the camera app. When it comes to filming in lock, there is another option for filming. And that would be in the free Blackmagic camera app where you can save all files directly to your phone and the files will be much smaller. The quality will be comparable. I do have a tutorial on how to use that app. I'll link it below. Let's go back to camera settings and hit preserve settings. Here I have everything checked. If you leave it unchecked, every time you're going to close and open up the camera app, it will reset to default settings. Let's go back. In composition, I suggest having grid and level enabled. And at the bottom, it is good to enable lens correction for ultra wide camera. I have macro control off as I don't want cameras to automatically switch to full macro videos when I get closer to a subject. However, if that is something you like, then you can certainly enable this feature. Give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials and perhaps check out one of these videos next. See you there. Ciao. Ahoy.